So for this tutorial, we'll be talking about the different types of plain material and we are also going to be talking about the different types of interlining and interfacing so we'll be explaining it step by step so you get to know the kind of material that is suitable for different types of styles and you get to know the different types of interfacing you are going to be using while making your garment All right. So we are starting with crepe. What you are seeing here is crepe material. So crepe material is smooth. It's very smooth. It's not shiny. Okay. It's smooth. Sometimes you won't even know which one is the back or which one is the front. Okay. So crepe material is always smooth and it's not shiny and another thing is that crepe material is stretchy slight stretchy is not too stretchy it is light stretchy so it's always stretchy either on only one side or on both side so this is these are the qualities of a good crepe okay so it has a smooth surface not shiny surface but a smooth surface and it's stretchy either on both side or on one side so if you are getting any crepe and it's not stretchy on one side or even on both side or it's not stretchy anywhere just know that that is not crepe that you are buying that is even if they call it crepe that is not an original crepe okay so we have two types of crepe we have the light crepe and we have the thick crepe okay so what i have here is a light crepe when i say light crepe is not is not something that you can see through it's something that you put in your eyes and you can see through it no when i say light it's not i mean that it's not heavy it's not too thick but it has some weight in it so this type of light crepe is usually okay for sewing of your blazer you know when you are sewing a blazer you normally add interfacing for firmness okay so you don't need a thick crepe for sewing of your blazer okay so this particular green crepe is a light crepe okay so this is very very suitable for making of your blazer making of your trouser yeah and so this other crepe here is a thick crepe okay so when i said thick crepe is not like it's too thick but it's thick it's thicker than this okay so if i want to make something like gown something like john suits this thick crepe is preferable so can you see my crepe is stretchy on both sides i love quality stuffs okay so both crepe are quality crepe but i'm using it for different purposes okay so i'm going to use this for a gown and i'm going to use this for blazer so can you see this is a thick crepe if you are thinking of making a ready to wear garment two-piece top you can consider using crepe if you are thinking of making an english wear you can consider using crepe so crepe is a very very versatile material so crepe is a very very versatile material you can use crepe for corporate outfits bridal train dress and also blazer suit so crepe is very very versatile so if you want to make a particular outfit and you want to use crepe check which type of crepe will be suitable whether it's thick crepe or it's light crepe and that is all about crepe so if you are getting a crepe make sure that the surface is smooth and make sure it's stretchy either on one side or on both sides so if you are getting anything less than this just know that what you are getting is a fake one okay let's get to another type of material so another type of plain material we'll be looking into is a poly material so can you see that some people also call it scuba okay scuba or scuba anyone so you are going to know it by how it stretches okay so can you see this 
it's 90 percent stretchy can you see that so on the case of crepe crepe is 30 percent stretchy but this is 90 percent stretchy can you see that and it's foamy it's foamy and it's also thick okay so sometimes when people who don't know what is crepe go to market to buy crepe they normally give them this in form of crepe okay so this is not crepe this is a poly material it can be used for a bridal train it can be used for gown okay so you can also use it to sew your trouser your gown but the most preferred material for all those things for me is crepe okay yes so just know that a scuba material or a poly material is 90 percent stretchy okay it's also smooth on both sides okay and it's foamy it's foamy so that is it about a poly material so another type of material we'll be looking into is a duchess material okay so duchess material is usually shiny okay is very very shiny and when you get the good one it's normally stretchy either on one side or both side okay so this one i have here is just slight stretchy on one side you might even if you see dashes and if you see dull face you will think they are the same thing but they are not the same thing dull face is not stretchy it's not stretchy on any side okay so dashes material is very very shiny on one side and it's slight stretchy can you see this so we have i have two types of dashes here so can you see here it's shining and the wrong side is not shiny and this one is also slight stretch can you see that it's just these ones are just stretchy on one side so if you are getting dashes and it's not stretchy on any side just know that that is not dashes okay so dashes can be used for draping also dashes is very very good for draping so it's also good for bridal train dress and it can also be used for bubble dress okay so that is it about Dutch's material. So another type of material we are going to be talking about is a velvet material, okay? So can you see the velvet material is usually stretchy. But if you get the good one, the good one is not too stretchy, okay? So one of the things that you, you are going to see in a good velvet is that when you cut it, it's not going to roll over. But if you get a bad one, once you cut it, it's just going to, you know, roll over, okay? So, for you to know a good velvet, make sure that the mouth is taped. So, these are just leftover velvet that I have. Just make sure that the mouth is taped, okay? That is one thing that you are going to know about a good velvet. So, can you see how this one is lasting? If this one isn't a good one, once I, I cut it, it's just going to keep rolling over so this is it it's not too stretchy can you see it's just stretchy on one side and even if i cut it it's going to relax so this is a velvet material okay if you want to know a good velvet material make sure that the mouth is taped okay the mouth of this one i've cut it off because this is a leftover material okay so another type of plain material we are going to talk about is a chiffon material. So can you see this is a chiffon material. You can see through a chiffon material. Chiffon material is always, you know, it's always, you know, calm. When you use it to sew a top or any dress, it's always calm in the body, okay? So chiffon material is a calm material and you can see through it. So you can use the chiffon material to sew a free top okay so this is a chiffon material so you can use it to sew an agbada bubu top even in one of my tutorial i used it to i use the black one to sew an agbada bubu top and it's really really fine okay so it's relaxing and this is an organza material so can you see it this is an organza material can you see how shiny it is so you can use an organza material to style your sleeve so you can use it for a peplum you can use it for designing okay so this is an organza material
The last but not the least plain material we'll be talking about is a calico material. Okay. So this is a calico material. This one is the one that we normally use in practicing. Okay. So this is the type of material my students normally use for first practicing. Okay. So if you are still practicing on how to sew, you can get a calico material. The length is always 60. Okay, so it's usually okay for practicing. If you are learning how to sew or if you want to try out a particular design, you can use a calico material. So we have different types of calico material. You have this stretchy one. You can see this one is slight stretchy and you can ha you have also the cutting one. Okay, so the one we normally use for practicing is the cutting one. So don't get the nylon one. So you get this type of material for practicing okay so this is commonly used by beginner students who is still practicing how to sew a basic bodies or how to sew a particular style so these are my calico so if i want to try a particular style i haven't tried before i normally use my calico material so i have different type of interlining here so interlining is what you use to support your dress okay so interlining is what you use to support your dress yeah i think i get the definition what you normally use to turn up turn the rough edges or hide the rough edges of your garment while making a garment okay so this is interlining when you are making a garment you have the main material which you we are supposed to be seeing on the outside and we have the interlining which is supposed to be on the inside so i have the different types of interlining here so i will explain them one by one so what i have here is lining okay so interlining is like a broad name for any type of material that you are using to cover rough edges okay so i'll be explaining them one by one so what I have here is my lining. So if you are sewing an Ankara dress, so you can use your lining, okay? So this is a lining. You can use this type of lining when you are sewing an Ankara dress. So can you see that? And I have my suit lining here. So if you are sewing something like a blazer, you can use your suit lining. Can you see? So suit lining is different from the normal lining suit lining is usually sleepy okay can you see it so i have two types of suit lining here so this type i can use it on any color okay so why this one i can use it on a white white color so if i'm sewing a white blazer i will use this so if i'm sewing any type of color that is you know related to this or maybe i have a particular material i didn't see the color of the suit lining i can use this flower one okay so this is basically used for blazer or when you are sewing suits this is the type of interlining that you are going to use for it it is called suit lining okay so and i have my doll face here so i have my doll face here this is a bridal satin and this is doll face can you see the difference bridal satin is more shiny than a doll face can you see can you see that so this is bridal satin is shiny than doll face so these two interlining is used when you want to sew a less material okay so if you are sewing a less material you need an interlining that you are going to place under the less okay you know less is usually you can see through a less so this is the type of interlining that you can place under a less okay under a less material when sewing okay so this is it and it's of different colors so it depends on the color of the less you are sewing you are going to get the color of the interlining that matches it or can you see that so the length is usually by 60 so this is it i hope you now you can now differentiate between a bridal satin material and a dull face so a dull face is more shiny than a bridal a bridal satin is more shiny than a dull face so a dull face doesn't shine it's normally calm okay and it's not stretchy it's not stretchy on any 
side so these are the two types of interlining and this is another type of interlining this is called a taffeta okay so this is taffeta you can also use it as an interlining if you are making if you are sewing a less and you don't have you think this is more expensive for you you can get a taffeta material some people use taffeta for an interlining when sewing a less so so taffeta is more cheaper than a doll face so you can also use taffeta to make a top okay so i've seen people use taffeta to make a top but this is a form of interlining okay so you can see the different type of interlining i hope you now understand this is a bridal satin doll face taffeta all of them can be used to sew a lace okay and this is a suit lining and normal line so you use this for Ankara you use this when you are making a blazer so let's talk about the different types of interfacing okay so I have a thick wording here so this is a thick wording we also have the medium one we also have the lightest one so this is the lightest one I don't have the medium one here but this is a thick one so I use this one for peplum so if you really want your peplum to stand you can use this thick word it's not that thick it's not the thickest so this is somewhere at the middle so i use this for peplum it's a type of interfacing you put on your peplum to stand so this is the lightest wording you can just use it to make your ankara fabric firm or any type of fabric you are sewing you just want to make it firm you can also use this to make it firm so this is a peplum stay okay this is what we call a peplum stay so one part of it is shining and the other part is not shiny so this shiny place this shiny part is what you normally place on your material and iron it on it so this shiny place you are going to place it on the wrong side of your material okay and you are going to iron it on it so this is a peplum stay and also this thick wording has a shiny part on it so the shiny part is also is always where the gum is okay the shiny part is usually where you are going to place on the wrong side of your fabric why ironing it on your fabric okay so this is another type of interfacing this is the wording you can you can use this in place of bra cup so this is a light wording it's not a thick one so i prefer using this light one because the thick one is i don't like the structure on the bust when i use it so this is preferable for for the bust area okay so this is a light wording not the lightest but a light wording so this type of wording is normally used to pad your bust area while sewing can you see it so it also has the shiny part the shiny part is where the gum is so the shiny part is where you are going to place on the wrong side of your material and iron it on it okay so this is another type of interfacing this is called st okay this is called st so can you see it also has the rough the rough side so the rough side is where you are going to iron on your material so st is normally used on suit making so if you are making a blazer and this is st you you normally iron it on your material before you sew okay can also iron this estate to make your material firm while sewing okay and that is it about interlining so interlining is normally classified as anything anything that you are ironing on your material while sewing to make it firm so it's classified as interlining so and um, we've come to the end of this tutorial guys if you have more questions about anything i said here you can put your question down on the comment section i will attend to that and if you've not yet subscribed to my channel please kindly do so this will really mean a lot to me so this is not all the interlining we have but i believe that knowing this will go a long way okay all right guys i will see you in the next one bye